I've laid out the agenda, and I just want to start with this first item. What exactly is a large assembly? How are we defining it? Is an assembly with more than 500 parts considered large? You might see this question a lot inside of SOLIDWORKS settings. But for me, there's a lot more to consider than just the number of parts. I see this when I'm looking at hardware specs and graphics cards. People ask how many components are going to be in your assembly. Well, there's a lot more to think about than that. So the way we're going to define a large assembly is simply any assembly with performance poor enough to max out or deplete your system resources or simply to hurt your productivity. And many of you might have seen this message before, the uh, check your system message. This is what you see in Windows 10. It looked a little bit different in previous years. You might see it right when you open up SOLIDWORKS. That can indicate something to me about the setup, perhaps your graphics driver, or SOLIDWORKS trying to check your system against a known database of good setups. And I'm more concerned too if it happens over time while you're opening and working with files, um, if this message pops up halfway through a project, we really might be running out of resources, but there are some things we could do uh, to make changes so that we don't have to change hardware and we can still get the job done. What other symptoms, though, do we have of poor performance? And I like to break these down into three general areas. The first one I see most often is slow opening times. This could correspond to slow saving times. It's a good indication of the performance of a large assembly. Simply open it up, literally time it. The second would be long rebuild times. And this does happen during the opening and saving of files, or usually during the opening of files if something's changed. But at any time you make a change, you enter a sketch, leave it, edit a component, leave it, hit Control B, hit Control Q, how long does it take to rebuild? And then finally, your general operations, mainly lagging and zooming and rotation. But I think of those three areas. Now this could be also waiting on software responses when you do something like add a feature, uh, but perhaps rebuilding is involved there. So I think of, straight opening time, how long does it take to rebuild? How does the performance feel to you when you rotate and zoom? Is the frame rate good or is there some lag time? Or really only 30% of what's going on is up to SOLIDWORKS. That's the, the software that's written in the hard code. 70% is under our control. The vast majority is things we can do to make substantial changes in the performance. Let me break this down. I mentioned these three areas, slow opening time, long rebuild times, or lagging when you zoom and rotate. Maybe to help, let's look behind the scenes at what SOLIDWORKS actually does when we're opening a file. And here's a flow chart, a little bit detailed, but again, broken into three sections. Think of it like this, SOLIDWORKS goes and finds all the files, accesses all your files, wherever they are, and loads them into RAM. When it does this, it's gonna look around and see, has anything changed? Has a part in my assembly changed since the last time I opened my assembly? If so, maybe I need to rebuild, go through that assembly tree, rebuilding what's changed, solve all the mates. Perhaps you have some of those assembly features or even in context features that need to update The mates could solve again, a little loop. Or maybe there's no component change and it goes right to the third step, painting the screen with graphics. So think of it in those three sections, accessing files, actually rebuilding, getting their size and position on the screen, and then painting the graphics. You don't need to know all the steps, but you should recognize those three hap things happen anytime you just hit file open. Now let's look at that first one, the loading, the accessing of files. This is the one that we normally don't think about and has the most behind the scenes stuff going on. And one area I see that can really slow things down is problems on the network. I usually explain this with the analogy of Willy Wonka. Maybe you guys remember this uh, image on the right here the kid who wanted to get beamed into the TV, right? He gets broken down into small pieces, beamed through the air and reassembled inside of a TV. It's not unlike what happens when you transfer data around. Data gets broken down, you open a file, it gets broken into little data packets. We add some extra data packets so that if we lose a few, we'll have duplicates around. We get some reassembly instructions included with that. It's a little bit of overhead. And then we send all those packets through the network and they get recombined over at the other end. Now adding that extra weight, sending that through all your network switches, through all your pipes, no matter if you've got a really fast network setup, um, this is gonna be slower than working locally, than working off your hard drive. So one of the main things to improve your performance is simply use a PDM system. If you've got SOLIDWORKS Professional or Premium, there's no reason you shouldn't be using 
SOLIDWORKS PDM standard, or you can get SOLIDWORKS PDM professional for larger groups. It will improve your performance. If you think, no way, my network's really fast right now, take your assembly, put it on your C drive, and just compare the difference. Just hit file open, see how long it takes from your C drive versus where you currently work off your network drive. Now, if you don't have such a good network, maybe you got some power outages during the day, you can imagine what would happen if only half these packets made it from one end to the other. There'd only be one half of the Willy Wonka kid <laughs> assembled inside the TV, his arms and legs maybe left behind. That's when you get file corruption. A data management system would also provide some protection against this because you'd have copies on the server side and local copies. So uh, use a PDM system or just take your files locally uh, instead of working kind of unprotected across the network. That's, that's a really big one for when SOLIDWORKS goes to get those files. There's more going on in the background that we don't see. How about actually this message right here, unable to locate file in SOLIDWORKS? When you open something up in SOLIDWORKS, how does it actually go to find those parts that go in those assemblies? It's a little bit different than you, than you might expect. There's actually a great blog put out by SOLIDWORKS. Uh, if you look for SOLIDWORKS search path order, you'll find this one. And this covers every step that SOLIDWORKS would take behind the scene to find a file. And it's not just going to look at where uh, you last saved that file, it's looking for the name of that file in the places that are quickest for your computer. Like if you already have it open in RAM memory, boom, it can get it instantly from RAM. And it looks in seven places or so before you see this message. It's already searched all over the place. So a good rule, uh, if you are seeing this message at any point in time, is to not have duplicate file names. SOLIDWORKS looks first by file name and it's fastest order for your computer and it could grab the wrong file or just spend a lot of time searching for that file. Let's look at a SOLIDWORKS setting. This is the reference documents path. Uh, by default, this is gonna be empty, but this could prioritize a location. Let's say you have duplicate file names all over the computer, but you know the correct files come from one folder. Well, I'm gonna show you in SOLIDWORKS, if I open up my system options, this is the gear symbol at the very top of SOLIDWORKS, open up those options, and I get into my file locations. It's where SOLIDWORKS goes to look for templates and all sorts of stuff. You can look at the reference documents path. Now, I don't have anything here. This is gonna be blank by default, but whatever you put here will prioritize the order of files. So it'll look first in RAM memory, then here. Now you don't want to put the wrong folder here because then you're going to have to wait while SOLIDWORKS searches the wrong folder before it finds the right files. Finally, clear those messages, errors, and warnings. You might be seeing a don't show again and waiting for something to happen here, an error message that you didn't even see pop up. That's also going to be inside your options. If you have SOLIDWORKS open right now, hit those system options in the gear and on the left side, messages, errors, and warnings. You can check any of these boxes to make these messages reappear. Anything you've clicked don't show again on is showing up here. So over the network can be a big issue and searching for files uh, can be the one that pops up as well. In fact, let's open up and something in SOLIDWORKS and see these steps on my side. I'm just gonna use my recent documents and open up an assembly. This is SOLIDWORKS 2018. Notice I'm getting a one, two, three graphic on my screen while this is opening files. Oh, and there's that message. I'm waiting 10 seconds for something to happen here. So it did all sorts of searching there while looking for components of my assembly. Now it's wait, making me wait 10 more seconds and then suppressing. These are these three opening steps I was talking about. Accessing those files, searching my computer maybe if it needs to, then updating the assembly. That's actually rebuilding, maybe looking at external references, maybe looking at uh, uh, assembly level features, and then finally painting the display. So in 2018, you actually see this during opening, those three steps. And I can see most of my time here was spent in that first step, uh, actually looking for files. So you definitely wanna review this. We'll look at some other ways, uh, but don't allow those duplicate file names. If you do use a PDM system, a lot of this is taken care of for you. Now, most people want to talk about hardware when it comes to large assemblies, um, especially because what if we just buy a bigger computer that's a faster computer? Well, if you were going to look at your hardware, I look at these orders of operations here. First of all, I favor a CPU speed over multiple CPUs. 
Nowadays, you can buy a computer with 12 CPUs in it. That's great for simulation, pretty cool for rendering. But what we do in CAD modeling across the board, a lot of times is very linear. I can't drill a hole in something unless I first extruded the material to drill the hole in. So step A has to happen before step B. So instead of having a lot of CPUs, get something with a little higher clock speed. It'll probably do good for you. Available RAM. Something you can always watch. The minimum is eight for SOLIDWORKS. I recommend 16 to 32. It's gotten pretty cheap these days. I use 24 in my machine. A solid state hard drive. I'm glad to see these are coming out uh, in abundance now too. Would be a great idea to have for your C drive. Install Windows on it. Install SOLIDWORKS on it. You can buy a smaller SSD for this. You don't have to pay for a big one. You can still keep your data, your hard data, out on a different drive, but you will notice a huge snappy performance uh, in SOLIDWORKS and the rest of your machine if you have a solid state drive for that C drive you put Windows on. Finally, the video card that you choose makes a big deal for SOLIDWORKS. Um, the RX tool, which we'll look at in a second, can give us an idea of which video cards we should buy. When you're wondering about this stuff though, check out the MLC-CAD website. If you search MLC CAD hardware recommendations in YouTube, you'll see our advice along with a PDF uh, for hardware. But long story short, hardware is most likely not the source of the poor, poor performance here. And what we want to do is find the actual source before we go do something like spend money on, on some new RAM sticks. Uh, it's most likely going to be something in the file. Remember, 70% of this is up to us. Now, the healthier your computer is important, and I just mentioned the SOLIDWORKS RX tool, which you see here on the right. If you've never opened this up, but you're at your computer right now, just search your start menu for RX. You'll see the SOLIDWORKS RX program. It's installed automatically with SOLIDWORKS, and hit the Diagnostics tab. The most important thing here is this green check on the very first item in diagnostics. This is checking all sorts of things about my computer, exactly what type of computer, what version of Windows I run, what year SOLIDWORKS, and it's recommending a graphics driver that I should install with my graphics card. If this isn't working for you, if it can't find your system, just follow this blue URL. It'll take you to a web page from SOLIDWORKS where you can use some drop down menus and fill out this information automatically. If it does recommend another graphics driver, click it, download it, install it. Um, that's one of the main things to affect SOLIDWORKS performance. Very easy to, to change there. Inside of SOLIDWORKS, uncheck those unnecessary add-ins. That's going to be right next to uh, the system options. There's a little drop-down arrow right there, and you can get to add-ins. It's also under tools and add-ins to open up these lists. These are different features and functions from SOLIDWORKS that you might be using. If you're not using them right now, uncheck them. Don't have it turned on, especially anything from a uh, third party that will uh, help your performance to uncheck those. Review your file find references. So maybe it went and found all my parts and my assemblies, but how do I know it got all the right parts from where I wanted? That assembly that I opened up earlier, I'm going to hit file find references, and I can see a list of everywhere it went to find these files. For me, it's all on the D drive. I don't want to see these come from too many different drives. I've got some toolbox components coming from the C drive. That's pretty much where I expected things to come from. So if it spent a lot of time trying to find files, maybe suppressed a lot of files that it couldn't find, review this file find references and really see where is it all going. You definitely don't want to go into network drives, certainly not multiple network drives, or you're going to see some slow time in that first step. If you have mate errors or equation errors, there is extra time spent on any rebuild error. So if you see something that's red in the tree, go solve it, go fix those things, especially in mates. Something you might not realize too is the version of the file. So I mentioned 50, 70% of this is up to us. What's SOLIDWORKS doing on their 30% of the bargain? Well, every year SOLIDWORKS improves the file structure. 2015 was a great example. I just put this one up. That's when they made a big change to the compression of their files. You'll notice all their files are probably 50%, roughly 50% less in file size. If you are transferring stuff across the network, that's great. Half as much bandwidth used. And every year there's improvements made. Now, if we take a look at my assembly that I opened up here, there at the very top is a little warning right over my save icon that says older version file. 
And I haven't, this is the first time I've opened it up in 2018, but I haven't saved it in 2018 yet. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Notice this is green. Anytime uh, you see green in this save as box, those are older version files that are all gonna be converted to the 2018 version when I hit save. In fact, right now I'll cancel, I'll show you some other tools for that. But it's important to save files into the latest version. And if you haven't done that, SOLIDWORKS is essentially doing a translating step when it opens up or works with those files. So it's important to know uh, what version they're in. In fact, let me show you another trick if you're at your computer right now. I'm gonna browse in Windows Explorer to a place that I have some SOLIDWORKS files. Um, I'm actually just go into where the files live that we're currently looking at. Now here's a bunch of SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies. You can add a column to Windows Explorer that's called SW last saved by, SW last saved with. Add that column and it shows me these were mainly saved in SOLIDWORKS 2017, a couple were saved in 2018. And that's one of the first ways I could get an idea of how many files I need to save. Saving them will make them faster. Saving them into this version. If you've got a lot to do, you can automate this with a SOLIDWORKS task scheduler. That's also in your start menu. Just search for task scheduler to find that and it can run through folders and upsave all those files. If you're using PDM, there's also built-in tools to do that without messing up your revision schemes. So I hope that solves what is a large assembly at least and what are some of its symptoms that contribute to it. The opening step is a great way to look at performance because nowadays in 2018, it breaks it right up for you into file accessing time, or maybe your computer was searching and doing things behind the scenes, into rebuild time, where it actually places the positions, maybe you've got some, some loops of solving there, and then in the graphics, into painting the screen. If you use that SOLIDWORKS RX tool, uh, the diagnostics tab, you can get some real healthy graphics going on. So, what about some immediate workarounds? Now this assembly I opened up, it opened in a minute or two. It, it wasn't that bad. But what if I want to open it even faster? I want to open up something quicker. Maybe you've got one that takes a lot longer than that. I'm going to close this and not save it so I can reopen it. And the first way I actually want to show you is a trick with configurations. And I don't have to make this configuration ahead of time. In fact, I'm just going to leverage some of the power of the file open dialog in SOLIDWORKS. If you ever watch this file open dialog, it's a regular open command, it looks like, there's a lot of options on the bottom that change when we browse around the files. Maybe I'll browse down to a similar place where I had that large assembly we just looked at. I've got quick filters on the right. Right now I'm set to all files, but I'm gonna use this filter to filter the top level assembly. And as soon as I click on it, now I've got options I can use here, like your opening modes, your configuration, display states. I'm gonna to go to configurations. This only has a default configuration in it, but I'll choose advanced. Advanced under configurations, and now I'm gonna hit open. The next thing you'll see is a window pop-up that really asks me, what do I wanna do? This configure document window. Do I wanna just open the default configuration? What I'm gonna do is a new configuration showing the assembly structure only. And I'm gonna call this suppressed. You can name anything you want. New configuration, assembly structure only, and I'll hit okay. Not even gonna rebuild, boom, it's open. All right, nothing's here in the graphics area, so uh, it's not great, but the file is open. And if I look at my configurations, I've simply got a new one with the name I typed in and everything is suppressed. I can move around and just unsuppress items as needed. Here's a table. And now I've got a configuration with just that table open. You got a really large assembly and you're just trying to get to a couple components in it. You can use this technique to open in a second, just like I did, unsuppress what you need. There's some other options under the advanced configurations. If you've never messed with it, I suggest you check it out. Some really cool stuff that can be done there. Uh, I'm a fan of that one because we can open the biggest assembly in a second. I know some of you thinking that's not a great workaround um, since there's Everything's suppressed in it, I can't see it. So let me show you another one. This is the large design review mode. Heavily overlooked, this is gonna load just a subset of data, basically just the display of our assembly. So I'm gonna follow the same type of technique. Let's close down this assembly again. 
And this time, I'm going to open it from the recent documents list. I just push the R key in SolidWorks, the pirate key, R, and it opens up all my recent documents. I can pin things here. When you're in this window, if you expand one of these windows, you actually get all those same controls that are in the file open menu. And this time, instead of using that advanced configuration, I'm going to use an opening mode called large design review, which is just going to skip straight to that third step of opening, that painting graphic step. And I'll hit open. Now, when I open this up, there's a few things I can't do. Uh, so it tells me, here's the only things you really can do. You can measure, you can create walkthrough animations, you can hide show components. Okay. And it's open, just like that. Now I can actually see anything I want here. I get a little eyeballs in the tree for these items. What's really great about these is I can choose something and do a selective open. So now I can open an assembly in large design review in a second go find which subassembly I want to work with and selectively open up just that subassembly to make edits to it. So those are two different ways to get the largest assemblies you have open in a couple of seconds. They won't exhaust your resources that way and you can dig down to what you want. I'm a big fan of large design review when you're actually explaining a design to somebody else. So check those out. Use them right now if you've got an assembly. Those are some pretty quick workarounds, but really we need to dig in to the assembly and fix some items. And I want to start with the tools that are built right in um, to SOLIDWORKS for performance evaluations. And let's start with some of those opening modes. I just opened one up here in large design review, but many of you know there are quite a few modes here. Resolve, lightweight, large assembly mode, large design review mode. These are familiar to a lot of SOLIDWORKS users. Resolve is probably what most people are using. Oh, let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes, and then maybe you'll know which one we should use best. So I mentioned the, the three areas of opening. Let's look at the three things that are inside of every SOLIDWORKS file. You can break down any SOLIDWORKS file into first, parasolid data. That's your actual geometry info. It's just the info you get if you ever open up an IGES file or a STEP file and it just says imported. It's just the shape of things. You can use this to figure out how heavy something is in mass properties or do an interference detection. Then there's the tessellation layer. That's actually how many triangles do we need to, to display this thing on the screen. And that's a file specific property. It's something you can change. It's saved with every one of your files. In the background, we have a the equation of a perfect circle saved with the parasolid data. To draw that on the screen, we have to decide how many triangles are we going to make that circle out of. The more triangles, the slower your performance would be. And then finally, we get to the parametric data of what we all think is SOLIDWORKS data, where the features, mates, and equations are solved. And these are different for, for each CAD package, uh, which is why sometimes you can't open somebody's. But nowadays, we have 3D interconnect. We can open all sorts of CAD packages. That's the really... Uh, the good engine and uh, SOLIDWORKS parametric stuff. So let's circle back to those opening modes. Resolve, which most people uh, use, opens, loads everything up. Whether you need it or not, loads everything in. Lightweight is the next one. It's actually my favorite mode. This loads the parasolid data and the tessellation data. It doesn't actually load uh, more data than that, the parametric stuff, until you ask for it. So it won't load, let's say, how heavy a part is. But when you go hit mass properties, it'll go retrieve that information at that point in time. I think everything ought to be lightweight. There is a system option that you can set to always load components lightweight. Uh, for the purposes of, of my demonstration, I don't have that set. But I'll show you where it is. It's just in the system options, that same gear symbol underneath um, performance. There's a box to automatically load components lightweight. You need to have all your files closed in order to check it, but I recommend that you check it. And every time you open up assemblies, they just automatically open lightweight. That's kind of loading the lowest amount of information you can need while still doing all SOLIDWORKS things. So make that your default. When working with assemblies, a lot of people know about large assembly mode. What exactly is that? Well, instead of just loading a subset of data, this is a conglomeration of settings. I have mine set to automatically use large assembly mode to improve performance when assemblies have more than 500 components. Um, it's really rule of thumb type of thing. And this is also in your system options, just under assemblies. When large assembly mode is active, it can do any of these items here. 
then you can decide which things are going to help you. Uh, disable verification or rebuild looks good. Really, if you check all these boxes, you're getting the best uh, performance settings for large assemblies, but maybe you still like to see some of those, so you don't have to, to check them all. Finally, large design review, you've actually already taken a look at. Only loads that display data, just that third type of graphics painting data there. It's the fastest one to open stuff up. I like it for design reviews when you're in explaining a design. Awesome walkthrough animations there, and you can always take one component out of it and selectively open just that thing up. I should mention there is one more of these for drawings. There's a quick view mode available for drawings only. Essentially, it's showing you a nice picture that you might have seen in like a Windows thumbnail. If you just need to view a drawing within a couple of seconds, it's like large design review, but just for drawings. Super fast to open. You can print a PDF from there. You don't have to worry about anything rebuilding or, or changing. Uh, it's great for, for a quick view of drawings. Remember, drawings are at the end of the chain. If you thought about that opening flow chart, uh, the performance starts at the part level. It moves to the assembly level. If you're having sluggish performance in a drawing, go back and look at the thing you're actually drawing. It probably originates there. So we've got opening modes for opening a few things up. How about once we have things open? Performance evaluation is the next place to hit. It was formally called Assembly Expert in SOLIDWORKS. Let's look at my assembly. Let's switch over to it. I open things up, and on the Evaluate tab, I'm just going to hit Performance Evaluation right from the middle. They've, uh, SOLIDWORKS has improved this in the previous years to include more and more information. So I can see the details of opening files, the details of, of display performance, what's eating the most graphics triangles. As I scroll down, I can see how many mates are evaluated, just over 100. If I've got in-context relationships, all things that could slow stuff down, plus a summary at the bottom of how these are looking. I open this up on any assembly right away to see what's going to uh, take the most performance away from me in this assembly. Where should I spend my time fixing something up? It is in parts and drawings as well. So really anything that's sluggish, go ahead and open this up. It's a built-in tool. It'll show you useful things like how many files have not been converted to the latest uh, version of SOLIDWORKS, that you're still spending extra time doing that translational step. How many mates do you have? I like to reduce the number of mates. If I'm going over 100 or so mates, I like to make some sub-assemblies, because those all get solved as once and, uh, and can really lead to slowness. And one thing I tend to say a lot is worst offenders lists. You'll notice there's a show these files button on every of the main uh, areas that came up in my performance evaluation. That will give me a list I can export to Excel, and I call these files the worst offenders. If I want to see which ones have the worst display performance or which ones took the most time to go find or rebuild, I may get a list of those out of a very large assembly and go work on improving the performance of those a uh, handful of files. Um, so it really helps me to narrow things down to a list of worst offenders. I really recommend doing that with performance evaluation. Similar to performance evaluation, I'm a big fan of the tool assembly visualization. While this tool wasn't originally crafted for uh, performance reasons, it's great for that. That's right next to performance evaluation on the evaluate tab. The first time you launch it, it does have to pull information from every component. So it may take a little time to load. But notice what it gives me is some columns. And I can click on the color column on the left to color code everything from a scale of red to blue. And I'm looking at file name, the quantity of the file, and the mass of those files in there. You might see, have we applied a mass? Are we looking for a custom property? You can change or add columns to this. And I'm going to, instead of looking at mass, I'm going to hit more and go looking at some other items because there's a huge amount of items I could look at, including things like rebuild time or the number of faces that are in there. Or one that I really like is just uh, graphics triangles count. I could look for total graphics triangles and then parse this to see which thing has the highest graphics triangles. In this case, it's my 36 instances of some studs. Not very complicated. What you'll find a lot of times is that you'll come to something with threads on it, extruded text, uh, an elaborate pattern. That thing is, is really 
the worst for gra graphics performance, and you can list that right here in assembly visualization. We'll talk about a few modeling changes you could make so that those are no longer the worst performing uh, components in my assembly since they're not that important to me visually. Graphic strangle is a great one to plot. Face count goes hand in hand. Maybe somebody's uh, putting some expanded metal and you notice the time really increase on, on opening. Uh, face count's a good one to look at. Bodies count. If you're using something that's imported from somewhere else that came in with thousands of bodies, having a multi-body part is inherently slower than having an assembly. Now we use multi-body parts all the time for sheet metal and weldments, they have great applications. But if you're dealing with a thousand multi-bodies, a thousand bodies in a part, it would be better to have an assembly with a thousand parts in it. Usually those will show you something imported from somewhere else. Or rebuild time of any of those uh, parts inside of there. And every one of these lists, you can also save out to Excel, get a list of your worst performing files or a list of what takes longer to rebuild and then go spend some time cleaning those up. When I'm working with a big assembly like this and I wanna get some stuff out of here to you, uh, I really like the selection methods that are built in the SOLIDWORKS. Nowadays you can hide stuff by just putting your mouse over and hit tab, hit shift tab to bring it back. You can box select as normal or do a lasso selection just like you're in a uh, photo view. But something you might not have seen is that your mouse cursor is just like any other tool. It's like a sketch tool or a pencil. There's a little drop down arrow right next to that cursor at the top and you can select all sorts of items here. You can select everything that's mated to a specific component, or you could select things by size, or select all of your toolbox components, suppress them, now you have a configuration without hardware and without evaluating all the mates for all, those hardware, for all that hardware as well. Um, if you didn't use toolbox, maybe you just wanna get small stuff out of here. You could do a select by size, move around a slider, until it's just got items that are pretty small, things that would be hardware, looking over the uh, size of everything here. So I can, I can even type in, get down to maybe 2%. Almost all those things are fittings. I've got them all selected now. I could right click and suppress them or just hide them. Suppress them would automatically give me a configuration without them. So use those selection tools. And if you ever find yourself making a whole lot of selections, maybe you selected 40 different things with the selection tool, use the advanced select and, and did a loop, you can always right click and save those selections. This is new in the last couple of years of SOLIDWORKS. If you hit save selections, this becomes a selection set folder at the top of the tree. If you ever have to make those selections again, it's only one click away. Great way to control multiple components, uh, especially inside of a, a larger assembly. So where are we at this moment? We know what's making our, uh, us consider something a large assembly. We've seen some of the symptoms, broken them into the three elements of a SOLIDWORKS file or the three periods of opening in a SOLIDWORKS file. We've looked at those two immediate workarounds, open something up as an advanced configuration, everything is suppressed, just unsuppress what you need, or use that large design review mode, open up that display data in seconds, selectively open inside of that what you need and a few built-in assembly tools. Performance evaluation, different opening modes you can use. Uh, assembly visualization is a big, uh, a big one that I use a lot. Let's talk about some modeling techniques. Now, some of these you're gonna find you can use right away. Some of them you might have to delay for your next project. And it's not as easy to go back to the ground floor, but that's where good performance starts, is on a good foundation. So I wanna give you a couple of very generic best practices. What you can think of is we're making a trade-off between intelligence and performance with some of these. The smarter we make our models and more parametric, the more there is to think about and calculate. Sometimes it's just not needed. For instance, I think every component should have a simplified configuration and probably a, an FEA configuration for simulation too. That way when I open up a part, I see an incredible amount of detail. But when I move up and I'm looking at a, a whole assembly, I have much less detail on that part because I just don't need to see it. I might keep the same faces for mating if we do that. Then I think about reducing the total number of mates. I like to keep mates around 100 is a good rule of thumb. 
If I'm using more than that, I might think about subassemblies. Watch out for making any subassembly flexible so that that subassembly moves in the context of a higher level assembly, because then all of the mates from that flexible subassembly are also solving at your top level assembly. So I try to reduce uh, the number of flexible subassemblies I use, perhaps just use a couple configurable positions for those subassemblies. Not all of your mates are created equal either. If you choose an advanced mate, uh, maybe to do some gear ratios, that takes a little more calculation time than just a, a concentric mate. And there's some mates you can use to reduce the total number. Perhaps try out a profile center mate for fully locating the position of a bolt uh, with just one mate instead of concentric and coincident. That could cut your hardware mates in half. Finally, external references. This is where you have two parts, maybe a part that grows when the position of two other parts moves. So its size is based on the position of two other parts. We use this a lot for routing. Um, it can make really intelligent files and assembly level features. That's any feature that you see underneath the mates folder in your tree. These do add a lot of intelligence. They take a little bit more calculation time. You might reduce the number of those you're using. Again, you're going to need them for things like patterns, for smart uh, routing and external references. But I try to limit them if I know my assembly is going to get very big. Let's look at the individual parts. Since I mentioned the start of the beginning, a part with many complex features in it, something that has a lot of loss, a lot of servicing, maybe something with a hundred different items in the list, uh, is going to be complicated because it has a lot of that feature and mate definitions to it. If you just want to simplify that part and stick it into an assembly, um, you could try two things. One, you could purge any features that aren't used in the tree, and two, Maybe you just convert that entire part to a body. And there are built-in tools in SOLIDWORKS for doing these things. So let's look at a few. First, I'm going to open my assembly and look for those external references and those assembly level features to see if I have those. The way I can do that is right-click the top of my tree and just hit List External Refs. Now, I do have some external references here. I know about them. I'm using them for routing. But these are parts that depend on another part. So might review this list. You can also see these by showing what are called update holders. If you right click the top of your tree and show update holders, you will get these items here at the bottom that show me after everything's positioned, this sketch has to be updated. Perhaps that causes a rebuild loop or another solve of the mates. And I have one assembly level feature here, this local pattern. I don't think I can reduce any of that stuff. I think I pretty much need all of it. So my assembly's okay. Now let's dig down to a part level. And I'm just gonna grab kind of a random part here and let's take a look at it. It's an older version file. Okay, so I should probably save it to convert it into this version, a 2018 version. And it's got all these features here, kind of a long tree for a single part. This could have been a sub-assembly. I'm gonna right click the top of this tree and just look for purge unused features. That's right, SOLIDWORKS will look over this tree and will show me, hey, these are all the features not being used for anything at all. Great, I can just purge those, actually deleting them in this case, and my tree gets shorter, less stuff to think about. That one's good. How about I still have a really long tree, really complicated tree that has to think about all the feature intent, your through all, your up to next end conditions, all that type of stuff. I can right click here and do a convert to bodies and remove all of that parametric info. The cool thing about doing this is it maintains all of our references. So it won't break any mates and it won't break anything in a drawing. I just need to give it a new name here. So I'm gonna save it as a new name, all right, converted, and hit okay. And SOLIDWORKS has now made me a part with one thing in it. All that parametric info is gone. I just have the shape and how it looks. If I flip back, to my assembly, it is actually switched out already in my assembly. I'll just rebuild it. And no mates broke on that. If I use it in a, a drawing, nothing's broken. It's immediately converted out. Great way to stop any rebuild time. A lot like using the freeze bar. That simplified that part up quite a bit. What else can we do with the parts? Patterns in parts can be really time intensive. If you are doing a pattern, maybe a whole pattern in SOLIDWORKS, 
Make sure you look in the options of that pattern. Find out if you can make it a geometry pattern. Geometry patterns are carbon copies. They remove some of that parametric intelligence um, as well. If you can pattern a body or a face instead of patterning a feature in that same pattern operation, you will have better performance because you're not patterning all that parametric information. And finally, if you're doing something like expanded metal, you just need to represent a plate with a thousand holes in it. If you have a supported graphics card, there is a real view cosmetic hole pattern. A lot of people don't know about this is in the appearances tab of SolidWorks. If you go under appearances into miscellaneous, you will find a real view only appearances and a cosmetic hole pattern. Simply drag that onto what you want to apply to it. You can pick your fill boundary, the hole sizes, how many holes there are. This will essentially create transparent windows in your part that look just like holes. You can see right through them, but it doesn't have, they're not physically holes, and so you won't have the performance drag you would have had if you had a part with a thousand holes in it. Great way to deal with something like expanded metal or a metal grate without suffering the performance hit. Now, extruded text, threads, springs, I like to remove these things. I like to get threads out of my model if I can because they're really hard on the number of triangles it takes to paint this on your screen, those graphics triangles. I mentioned them earlier. I found them in the, the visualization tool. If you're looking at graphics triangles, notice the image quality slider bar. I'm going to open up a part. This bar is file specific, and it exists in both your parts and your assemblies. If I go into my options, I've got system options for SOLIDWORKS, and I've got document properties, which are file specific, and an image quality section here. At the top, there is a slider. When you move it to the right, circles are gonna look very smooth on your screen. When you move it to the left, circles are gonna look pretty chunky on your screen. Behind the scenes, the math is still perfect for a circle, but it's just how it's showing on my screen. And this can really make your parts and assemblies 10 times faster immediately. It's gonna be saved with every one of your files. So open those files up and look at where this bar is. I like to keep it three clicks from the left. That is where I would recommend you put it. This is something you can do that will very quickly speed up your part and assembly performance. It's file specific, it's at the part level, it's also at the assembly level. So open those assemblies up too and see where it's at. Ought to be right about there. Since these are file specific, save them inside of a template. When I hit file new and make a new part, I'd like to have my simplified configurations there ready to go. I'd also like that image quality slider to be about three clicks from the left. So make sure you have a good template uh, so you can start those off on the right foot. I should mention imported geometry. When somebody sells, sends you a step file or an IGES file, um, because they didn't know about convert to bodies, but they wanted to hide their proprietary info. So they, they saved it as a step first and sent it to you. Or maybe they use some other program. Translating stuff can be a big performance hit because uh, inside there could be problems you don't see. Easiest way to avoid it, use SOLIDWORKS 3D Interconnect. This is available in SOLIDWORKS 2017 and 2018. If you look at your import options, it ought to be enabled by default. This gives us the ability to open up Inventor, Creo, NX, Solid Edge, if you're using SOLIDWORKS Premium, even CATIA V5 files without translating them. Just opens them up perfectly. Um, in 2018, this will also work with step files. So you can open up all these types of file types in SOLIDWORKS, no longer having to translate them get any problems that would affect you down the road. If you do translate something, run import diagnostics right away. Let's look for something in my assembly that is imported. I'm gonna use this filter at the top of the SOLIDWORKS tree. Find something imported, here we go. Whatever handle this is here has something imported in it. Here it is, imported. The first thing I wanna do when I see this is right click and import diagnostics. This will look over for translational errors that could have happened inside the file, just like translating a language, something you might not be able to see. This is perfectly clean, but you have to run this first. After you add features, you can no longer run import diagnostics. Similarly, there is a check geometry tool, which can do stringent geometry checks, and just make sure that there's nothing wrong with that file. Very important for imported geometry. When you do import something, 
if you go into those import options, you have the option to import multiple bodies as parts. Meaning when you import a file and you see it's got a lot of things in it, it should come in as an assembly. It's better to have an assembly with a thousand parts than one part with a thousand bodies. So adjust your import options before you hit file open. If you're using an older version of SolidWorks, you'll want to go into the file open dialog. Make sure you change that file type to the type of file you're opening. You'll see an options button right here. If you're in 2018, they have import right in the system options and you can choose to do things like import multiple bodies as parts so that they will come in as an assembly instead of a multi-body part. I use 3D interconnects, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Verification on a rebuild is another geometry check. This is on your performance dialog. Um, it's best to have it unchecked for most things unless you're doing some strict geometry check and running check geometry. Do not discount just remodeling something. If someone sends you the engine of a John Deere tractor and you just need the location of the mounts of that engine, why not remodel it instead of having something very slow uh, inside our assemblies? When we get to the assembly level, some things we're going to think about too, like reducing the number of mates. I like to keep those around 100 or less, or I'll start thinking about using sub-assemblies so that those mates don't have to solve. Again, watch out for flexible sub-assemblies because then they will solve at the top level. I reduce my use of external references. External reference, one part will grow based on the position of another part. They're very smart, great ways to keep holes lined up in between multiple components. I do use them a lot, but if I'm working on a bigger assembly, I try to limit their use as it takes a lot of uh, intelligence and thinking to do that. Again, you can right click the name of your assembly in the tree and hit list external references to see which external references you have or show update holders to see what would happen below your mates folder. If you're looking into the performance evaluation tool, you'll also find out how many external references you have and if you've built some kind of circle, uh, which can be a problem for references. I also like to reduce my assembly level features. That's anything that comes below the mates paperclip. I do need patterns, so I get a lot of features there, but if I can reduce those numbers, I try to. And of course, that image quality slider, which is huge, you can do right now, put it about three clicks from the left. Finally, SpeedPack is a great tool. It's been in SOLIDWORKS since 2012, and it's gotten a lot better, especially in 2018, I think. A SpeedPack is like a large design review for just specific assemblies. This creates a derived configuration inside of that subassembly. When you do this, you get a picture of what that subassembly looked like, a 3D picture in your big assembly, so it loads super fast and you can rotate around. That information is stored inside that subassembly's derived configuration, but you can leave behind some faces to mate with, or you can do my favorite one, which is a graphics only speed pack. These aren't that complicated. I'll show you in a couple of seconds how they work. Let's say I would like to go back to my assembly and I would like to take one of the subassemblies that's in it and just create a, a picture there, something that's kind of like a large design review. So let's pick assembly here. How about my big pressure vessel that's sitting inside of here? I could open this up and on its configuration tab, right click the configuration and create a speed pack right inside of here, add speed pack. And it would ask me to select certain faces to leave behind so that I can click on those faces in the future. And I could store that information right inside this configuration with a derived configuration. What I prefer to do is actually, since I've already got this inside of an assembly, is I'd like to just create the speed pack from there. Now the data will still get stored inside this subassembly, but I'm just gonna right click it and go to my speed pack options. I could create a mated speed pack, which will leave behind faces that I've mated with so I can click on them and meet with them again in the future. Or I can create a graphic speed pack, which will just immediately throw in a picture of this, a 3D representation of this file. Take a look at how it looks in the tree. It's just got the speed pack symbol. And now I can't click on it. In fact, when I move my mouse over it, it kind of disappears. It's just like a large design review. So I can load up these components, only load the display data. This will load in just 
a fraction of a second if you can put something in a speed pack. Now, if you don't like that circle, you can turn that off in your options so that you don't have to see uh, that circle there with things missing underneath it. And in 2018, you can set speed packs to warn you when they need to be updated. So if someone goes and changes that pressure vessel, because I've just got a picture, how do I get that change in my picture? 2018, you can get an option to tell you, hey, it's time to just right click and hit update speed pack. So you don't have to use it just for things that would never change again, just things that you don't think you're gonna need to click on and you want them to load super fast. Just get in your options and you can set how you want to update those speed packs. So speed pack is like a large design review. It only loads the display data of just those sub assemblies that you wanna open super fast. I don't want to come back to the agenda real quick. It's uh, just about 10.55. I'm going to stop a little bit before 11 so I can circle back to some questions. Um, we've covered what makes an assembly large, some immediate workarounds. I hope you've seen some built-in tools you can use immediately, and a few of my favorite modeling techniques. There's a lot more than this. So start using these tips you've seen. Certainly reduce that image quality slider. Grab some of those worst offenders lists, as I call them, those lists of files that you can see in your performance evaluation or your assembly visualization. And of course, come check out some training with us here at MLC. We have public training courses. Uh, they're listed on our website. We have a calendar of those. Come find a location and come in, maybe for some advanced assemblies training. We also do custom training. Uh, if you'd like us to evaluate something specifically to fit your needs, just hit our website and you'll find those. One question come across here for small fillets. Do small fillets, um, how, how come they tend to slow down performance? And really one of the biggest reasons you would see that is the image quality slider. Um, I kind of mentioned threads um, or a spring. Anytime you really have a curved surface, what we're doing is writing the math for that surface behind the scenes. Let's say a normal fillet is basically a semicircle, half a circle. Math is very simple for it. On the screen, how many triangles are we gonna use to actually look at that circle? That's gonna be controlled with that image quality slider. Um, let's just open up a part. I guess it doesn't matter what part. Still need to save my things in the 2018. And I'll take a look at something. Uh, there's actually a fill it in here already. I'll just look at this from the side, and I can see this fillet right here. If I zoom really in, it's kind of blocked. It just has some chunks here. Like it's straight lines to see that. And if I jumped into my image quality and made that slider a lot finer, it'll start to smooth out and use more triangles to make that. Um, if you're adding fillets and you're noticing things are really slowing down, taking a long time to generate those fillets, I would wager that it is as simple as taking this image quality slider back over here, and all of a sudden you'll see your fillet performance increase dramatically. And uh, thank you for joining me, taking this time out of your day. I hope I've shown you a few things that will speed up your large assemblies.